why do you like index why are you hyped for index because here's my opinion i don't get it it's so it's it's not bad it's just really mediocre and that's my opinion on index this was me literally a month ago reacting to the new index season 3 trailer as i was streaming my impressions of the full season chart see the whole index railgun toaru whatever you want to call it franchise has always been somewhat of a mystery for me from my perspective it always looked like your typical generic high school fantasy action light novel that has been done a million different times nowadays and any attempts to watch the anime did nothing to prove me otherwise yet it's a franchise that had one of those fan bases that would praise it to high heavens you know one of those rabid fan bases that seems nigh on obsessed with a franchise and would take any opportunity they had to spread the word of the holy gospel like they were recruiting for a new religious cult or something. So after seven years of silence before a new season getting announced seemingly out of nowhere, I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to try to get to the bottom of why this franchise is so beloved by so many despite by my accounts it looking like a dated mid-2000s generic light novel franchise that time should have left behind. And through that journey I discovered a unique world that blends fantasy and science in a way I'd never seen before. A grand narrative that fits the bill for a shared universe I had been searching for an anime for so long. A power system so intriguing it tested my knowledge of my university education that before I knew it, something happened. I became a fan. <laughs> Index has become my newest obsession, and sometimes there's nothing quite like the feeling of completely losing yourself in the franchise. Consuming every little thing it has to offer, researching the intricacies of the world mechanics, finding every little bit you can about the lore and background, and you do it because the deeper you go, the more rewarding the experience becomes as a whole. This franchise was exactly that for me, so today I wanted to share some of the reasoning why I got so sucked in to the world of Index. Now before I get started, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Bookwalker who are doing an index giveaway right now if you want to win some figures. Details are coming at the end of this video if you feel like having a dabble in the franchise because I understand that as big as Index was in its heyday, it's been seven years since its last anime adaptation, so I'm sure there are many of you now who have not even heard of the franchise, so here's a bit of background. A Certain Magical Index is a light novel series that started in 2004 and has since spawned a grand franchise spotting multiple anime adaptations, spin-offs in mangas and anime forms, and lots and lots and lots of light novels. Many people are familiar with the franchise through its mainline anime series A Certain Magical Index, in which we mainly follow a spiky-haired protagonist Toma Kamijo on his adventures of fighting magicians, picking up chicks and solving literally every problem by punching it in the face. <laughs> But arguably equally as popular is its spin-off series A Certain Scientific Railgun which focuses on the adventures of Makoto Misaka, a powerful esper with the ability to control electricity, shrug off teleporting lesbians and is basically Pikachu as a tsundere anime girl. From that brief description it may be hard to see the appeal of Index because that's what it looks like from the outside and to say the franchise is a bit daunting is kind of an understatement at this point. But from my personal experience through all the confusion about the sheer scope, explanations about chronology, read and watch order, I never really saw anything to explain to me what the core appeal of Index was and why it's amassed such a loyal fan base. So that's what I'm going to try and do today. And I think a good place to start instead of explaining specific plot details is to start explaining what Index is as a concept. Index is set in a world very reminiscent of the one we're in right now, except both magic and science play a massive part in it. You have the world of magic, which has its roots in faith and religion that can be traced back through various myths and legends, and has shaped a lot of the world's history through secret organisations and practices. This is where you see a lot of the traditional fantasy elements, with mages and magicians drawing their powers through spells and magic, and it finds its basis through a lot of real-life lore we can find in this world. However, you also have the world of science, as the main setting is the modern sci-fi world of Academy City. Here you have a city that's advanced to be 30 years ahead technology-wise to what we have today, and it's full of people who have gained supernatural power through the practices of science and experimentation. And while both these worlds are normally kept separate, they are in conflict with each other, both vying to be the dominant power to shape the world of Index, which serves as the basis for the various stories told in this setting. And it's really hard to get this perspective from the beginning. This is where a lot of the confusion about what the franchise is about lies. Many people, myself included, were only really exposed through the plot synopsis of the 
opening arc. Something about a generic spiky haired boy whose right hand has the power to cancel out any magical supernatural ability, hashtag a week into No Nut November, running into some lolly nun that has a load of magic books in her head who's getting chased by this mysterious magical organisation with your usual trashy power fantasy stuff. And while this is technically what happens, it's not an accurate representation of the franchise at all. Despite its name, Index is not actually about Index, the lolly nun character, nor is it really about Toma, despite him getting most of the screen time. A better way to describe this series from a broader perspective is that it's like a shared universe with many moving parts having more in common with things like Game of Thrones or the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Think of every story arc as a different movie in the MCU. Each arc is a self-contained story that adds a new element or cast of characters to the world, whether they focus exclusively on the science side of things or the magic side of things, and occasionally you get bigger crossover events that involve every party, where you get to see the normally separate cast and elements come together. Because of this structure, you can have multiple storylines running in parallel, and sometimes you get to see the same events happen but from different characters' perspectives, and while not every story arc is essential to follow along with the grander narrative, they all add something to the canon of this shared universe. So while all the different series stretched across multiple mediums may look confusing and daunting, what it really means is that there are multiple ways to get into this franchise. You can start with Index, or you can even start with Railgun if you so please. You can read the light novels for some arc, then switch to the manga, then switch to the anime, or vice versa. It doesn't really matter how you choose to consume it, because the universe that you'll take place in stays coherent. The only difference is that the light novels may go more in depth in the intricacies of the world and their systems. This is why I hazard to call Railgun a spin-off, because while technically the events aren't as important to the main narrative, in the same way that, for example, Black Panther doesn't move forward the grander Infinity Stones plotline of the MCU, it's a great story and serves to give the viewer a better understanding of the characters and why they act the way they do in the main series. Index's core appeal stems from this expanded universe and how extensively it blends in its science fiction and fantasy elements in a coherent world. I've made a video before expressing my desire to see some kind of shared universe in anime form, and I didn't realise at the time how closely Index fitted this bill, because for all you can say about the characters and protagonists that make up the world, as good or bad as the characters may be, they aren't individually what makes this franchise what it is. They aren't what drives its fan base to be as invested or obsessed as they are. It's the world which is encompassed by its setting, Academy City. Academy City is a weird beast to tackle because while it's technically just a backdrop for all these story arcs taking place, I'd actually argue that it is the main character of the franchise because while Toma may be the face and main protagonist of Index early on, as the world expands and more characters get introduced, Index becomes the story of Academy City itself. It's the inhabitants of Academy City whose storylines we get to follow. It's Academy City that is the driving force for the grander conflict. It's Academy City which serves as the core thread that connects all the numerous plot lines together. Even if events aren't happening there, it always exudes a constant presence and honestly seems like a really cool and unique place, which unfortunately the anime doesn't always do justice with its simple portrayal of FUCKING BAD CG WIND TURBINES EVERYWHERE! Because of the amount of strange different happenings revolving around this city, the series can take many forms and genres depending on the arc and character we're following. Sometimes it's a dark sci-fi involving horrific human experimentation, sometimes it's a fantasy action exploring secret underground organisations, sometimes it's a fluffy high school slice of life, and sometimes it's all of those things. Admittedly I found the story arcs that focus on science far more interesting than the ones that focused on magic, but what made it all worth sticking through was when you were able to see all the various characters and plot lines converge. Some of my favourite moments were actually just seeing different characters from the various story arcs meeting for the first time and interacting with each other. There was a few episodes in Index Season 2 that was purely dedicated to bullshit slice of life fluff involving all the cast members, and it was honestly some of my favourite episodes. The franchise rewards you for investing in the world as a whole. You'll have elements you like, you'll have elements you won't like, like, you'll have characters that bore you and characters that you absolutely love, which, let's be honest, is going to be Accelerator because he's best boy. It's the juxtaposition of all these different narrative elements you wouldn't normally see together put in one place that makes it so interesting. You not only have mages and espers, you have angels, alchemists, underground assassins. You got modern military SWAT teams fighting magical nuns, and what I like is how much they try to ground it in our world. Because every element, no matter how ridiculous, has a basis from our real world. Supernatural phenomenon that we may hear about here and there are given an explanation in Index with the rules that structure that universe. And that's why this setting works. This attention to detail is something that's also mirrored in their power systems, which is the one other big unique thing this franchise has to offer. God 
Damn, I love the power system in this franchise. Well, half of it anyway, because most noteworthy is that there are two entirely different systems that work in parallel. One for the magic side of things and one for the science side of things, and both have been given a lot of care to ground it in with elements we can find in our own world. The magic system was a bit more confusing for me, but it makes sense in the lore because they are meant to be supernatural phenomena that cannot be explained or analysed via any sort of scientific means and reasoning. So instead, the basis of magic in the Index universe comes from real life mythology and law you can find historically. From Christianity to Judaism to Norse and Egyptian mythology to Feng Shui, it all finds its roots through stories told through world history and religion. To give an example, someone like Jesus in the Index universe would have been a magic user. However, to me, the standout power system comes from the science side of things and that's what I want to focus on because what makes this stand out so much is how grounded every ability is in real world science and physics. Which, you know, is something I appreciated heavily as someone who went to university to get a master's in electronic and electrical engineering. I know this is a weird time to flex this, but I paid tens of thousands of pounds for this piece of paper only to become a YouTuber, so let me have this. Let's take Misaka for example. In concept, her ability is pretty simple. She can control electricity. Nothing new here in the world of anime powers, but it's not so much the ability itself, but more so the logic behind its application. At the simplest level, she can shock people, but thanks to my masters in electronic and electrical engineering, I know that electricity has more applications than just this, and so does she. Because if she can generate an electric current, that means she can generate a magnetic force. Something you'd know if you learned the right hand rule, which is what I did in my masters in electronic and electrical- Okay, sorry, I'll stop this now. Thanks to being able to create a magnetic force, she can stick to metallic objects, control debris, manipulate iron sands, and vibrate it at a fast enough frequency to make it a buzzsaw. Let's go even further. What else can you do with a combination of magnetic and electrical force? Well, you get something called a Lorentz force, and what can you do with a Lorentz force? Well, you can make a fucking railgun, which is a real life weapon our modern military has been developing, and if you couldn't get Yes, that's why the series is called Railgun. The theory adds so many layers to someone's ability and thus your combat strength doesn't necessarily come from raw power, but it's also your understanding of science and physics and how best to apply your ability. And this is something I found incredibly original and made the science fights that much more interesting. But I think the one character that really encapsulates just how innovative these abilities can be while still grounding it in real world physics, it's Accelerator, who has one of the most unique abilities I've seen in all of anime and no, it's not his ability to laugh like a beatboxing hyena. <laughs> Accelerator's ability is vector transformation. Now, for those of you who didn't pay attention in maths and physics in school, a vector is any quantity that has a magnitude and direction. And, and what this is... <laughs> I'm literally explaining fucking vectors in a video about anime! Pretty much every force you can think of can be broken down into vector components. An accelerator can control the magnitude and direction, and what that means is any attack, no matter how big or powerful thrown at him, he is able to control not only the direction, but also the size of that attack, redirecting it back at his opponent or anywhere that he pleases. But the application of this ability goes so far beyond that because so many things have a vector component. He can start earthquakes by tapping his foot on the ground, he can block incoming sound, he can control the wind, he can manipulate blood flow, he can accelerate any object just by poking at it. If something has a direction, he can control it, and what you can do with this is only restricted by your knowledge of vectors. Now I'm sure you're thinking such an ability sounds ridiculously overpowered, cause it is. So the limitations the author has given around this ability I feel are just as smart. Because there isn't a limit to the size of the force he can manipulate or something, but his limitations come in, get this, Mathematical calculations. That's right, his kryptonite is FUCKING ALGEBRA! Vectors can be complex mathematical concepts to calculate, and if you're going to apply these manipulations in a combat situation, you need to be able to calculate how to do it in real time. This is exactly Accelerator's limitations. He has an onboard computer to assist him with the calculations, so if there's too much data to process or the computer's battery runs out, that is his limit on what he can manipulate, and in my honest opinion, that's fucking genius, because it logically makes sense if such a ridiculous ability actually existed in this world. Which means if Accelerator's ever in a bind, there's only one thing he can do. In the face of overwhelming odds, I'm left with only one option. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. Of course, understanding the theory behind these powers doesn't actually matter in the wider context, but for pretty much anyone who comes from a scientific background, it feels incredibly rewarding, and it adds that extra layer to every fight scene, which is something I found totally unique. All right, how many people have I lost with that last section? Is anyone still here? Engineers? Mathematicians? Physicists? 
Anyone else? Anyone? If you've made it this far and all this sounds exactly like your cup of tea, well, this is the time when I start putting terms and conditions to everything I've said. A lot of them. There is one thing I've glossed over to focus on the positives and appeal of this franchise, and that is just how goddamn hard it tries to put new people off from getting into it. Remember when I said I was put off by how generic and boring the beginning arc seemed to be? Well, that still holds true and can still definitely be applied to a lot of the early arcs in Index. The franchise came at a time when trashy harem bait high school fantasy light novel adaptations hadn't already oversaturated the industry, and going back through it now, it has really really not aged well. Early Index embodies almost all of the overused tropes, character archetypes and cliches we have gotten bored of since this initial release, and it ends up coming across as a run-of-the-mill shonen action show. Considering how much of it revolves around Toma, he's just not a very interesting character and only gets development further down in the light novel. Not only that, but his ability to cancel out other abilities is just so fucking boring compared to everything else I've talked about in the franchise's power systems. It's not bad per se, it's just extremely generic, and this is what makes it a really hard sell. I would like to say that you could easily power through it and quickly get to the good stuff, and while there are definitely some highs I'm going to touch upon, there is a lot of bullshit to wade through. Entire seasons worth of episodes, mind you, which in today's standard of short, hard-hitting 12 episode anime series is probably going to put off about 90% of you. But this is exactly why there's no such thing as a casual fan of the franchise. Only those who've been willing to trudge through all the mediocrity are rewarded with everything the world can offer, and if you're willing to do that, that probably means these elements I've talked about are something that appeal very strongly to you, as was the case for me. The good thing to know is that while Index Season 1 was mostly world building and Season 2 was a lot of build up to a climax that was only just teased at by the end, those who have stuck with it are finally getting to see a lot of the payoff that is being adapted in Season 3 that's airing right now. And if you continue reading the light novel it only gets better and there's so much of it to lose yourself in. Plus with a new season of Railgun and Accelerator just being announced there is no better time to get into this franchise. So, after all this, there is one question left. How do you get into Index? <laughs> do you want the long version or the short version? Index Season 1, then Railgun, then Railgun S, then Index Season 2. That's the short version. However, that's a lot of episodes and a big commitment if you're still on the fence, and quite frankly, if I had attempted that, I would have never gotten past the first season of Index. So I wanted to share this streamlined method I used that made me decide whether I wanted to fully dive into the franchise. Now, I consumed it across different mediums, so if you don't want to do that, I will put the corresponding anime episodes, manga, or light novel volumes on screen if you just want to stick to one. This is Gigax Guide to Speedrunning Index. I started off by reading the first Index arc via volume volume 1 of the Index Light Novel, then I read the first arc in Railgun via volumes 1 to 3 of the Railgun manga, then I watched the anime Railgun S, which is basically what sold me on the franchise. I managed to achieve this in a day, so it didn't take too much time, and the reason I chose to do this was I could quickly get an introduction to the magic world, and also the science world, while being able to quickly go to one of the early highlights that not only ties in a lot of the main protagonists, but is also a great fucking standalone story in its own right, in its best adaptation in Railgun S. Like I said, you can get into the the franchise whoever you want, this is just my method because I'm an impatient prick. Also this might be a good time to mention that all the light novels and manga are available via Bookwalker if you want to try this method out. Hashtag coupon code GIGUK for $5 off. This is no doubt a very daunting and quite frankly hard franchise to get into and will definitely not be for everyone, but getting into this franchise, its world and characters has given me a completely unique experience in the 15 or so years I've been an anime fan, and that is not an easy feat to do anymore. If this seems like something way too heavy to get into, that's completely understandable. If you just want something more quick and casual, there are many, many other shows you can get into. But if the specific aspects I just talked about sound exactly like something you would appreciate and you just want to lose yourself in a franchise, fucking do it, man. Become one of us. Because I can see why this franchise joins the ranks of things like JoJo's, Monogatari, and Fate for having this really dedicated fan base that never shuts up about it. Because there really is nothing else like it. <laughs> Come on,
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed me essentially just gushing over Index for almost 20 minutes. I do want to give a quick shout out to Bookwalker right now who has the Index Light Novels, Railgun and Accelerator Manga if you want to try it out. They're actually doing a giveaway right now where you can win an Index figure, a Misaka figure or a signed board by just downloading a free sample of the Index Light Novel before November 30th. Plus at the moment it's 20% off all the Railgun and Accelerator Manga and you can use coupon code GIGUK for another $5 off. That's all a pretty good deal in my opinion so get on that before November 30th. I'll include a link below with the details so remember to use coupon code GIGOK for $5 off any purchase you make. Because if you want to get into the franchise there's not a better time than now. Anyway that's all I wanted to say. I've been GIGOK and I'll see you all next time.